And once more, welcome back to the Seed Story Cup number three here by Take TV. With me now here as a co caster is Xixo. Yo. Yo. And we are expecting a very nice match here between Ostkaka and Firebat. It's Group D now, and really, it's the reigning world champion against somebody who came through the open qualifier tournament. Yeah, I think Ostkaka is the best player in the world right now. So. You think Ostkaka is the best player in the world right now? Yes. Yeah, uh, give me some explanation. Why do you think that? Like, on the NA ladder, a Blizzard guy said he has the highest win rate ever achieved. Okay. And he's pretty good. How high is that win rate and how did he achieve it? What deck did he play to re or overall win rate? He, like, it's just overall over one season, I don't know. I don't have much information on that. It was just like one Blizzard guy who made like mentioned it once. But he plays face match a lot on ladder. Okay. Yeah, Oskaka definitely a, a very nice job to even be here because it's hard to qualify for that tournament. But we are ready to jump into the first game. It's a best of five series. And there we go. See the Mage Mirror? It's a Mage Mirror. Well, it could be Freeze Mage, as yes. you said. Oskaka Freeze Mage against... It's going to be Mech Mage against Freeze Mage. Exactly, that's what it's look li uh, looking like here. And the coin is on Oskaka's side here. So, uh, Firebat also, he has the Snow Chugger in hand. I don't know if you want to keep the Pilot or Dreader here. You can definitely think about the Tinkertown Technician, but you get some some pressure. You don't need a more aggressive start against Freeze Mage. Like, I'm pretty sure you watched Ostrakas matches. He knows playing against Freeze Mage, and he can't just afford to pass turn 1 and play Snow Chugger turn 2. He needs a more aggressive play. He needs more damage on the board or a Mech Warper to pile up more damage in the, on turn 3 to turn 4. You can't just play a Snow Chugger and pass on turn 2. So, so what would you mulligan here as Firebat? Definitely the Shredder and the t Tinker Town, and I wouldn't mind mulliganing the Snow Chugger either. Okay, so you definitely want to draw that one drop? Yeah, and the Mag Warper. And the Mag Warper, okay. Uh, Firebat keeps the Snow Chugger though. He agrees with you on the other two minions and just draws an Anoyatron uh, and the Fireball. Then the Spider Tank, so no turn 1 play for him here. Oscar Khan, on the other hand, well, I guess he will just keep the coin. You could think about coining out the Mad Scientist, but it doesn't make sense. You've got Elixstraza already lining up in your hand, and you definitely want to use that before you put on the pressure. Yeah, but I don't mind coining Mad Scientist. Like, a Mech Mage will play either a Tinker Tower, I mean, either a Snow Chugger, a Mech Warper, or an Annoyed One on turn 3, and he can trade into everything if he just pings and traces Mad Scientist in. So, I wouldn't mind if he uses his coin already. And what way would be better for Oscar Kao? You wouldn't mind that play, but do you think it's better to use the coin here because you have that nice trade? Yeah, if you don't do it now, you just play it next turn or play first board next turn, but then you play reactive this way, you play proactive, clear your opponent's board, get a secret out. It's a really good position to be in. And that's exactly what we see. The Mad Scientist enters the board here and Firebat counters that with his snow checker that might easily be taken out now by Oscar Kerr just running his Mad Scientist into that and then using his Fireball if he wants to. He can also use his Frost Bolt and put some pressure on the Mad Scientist. He does need the Secret Out early because it's not Snow and Steel. It's, um, Even though we see Archmage and Thanatis here, Oscar Kerr decides to, to use his Frost Bolt right away to put on more pressure as you just explained. And now Firebat puts the Spider Tank down. That's the first minion that can't get answered directly. But he could just play um, the Doomsayer if he wants to. That's like it's really unlikely that Firebat would deal with the Doomsayer. He wouldn't like just first ball ping and erase his whole turn. So if he does it, it would most likely be a Shredder just to get the two drop and attack face with the Spider Tank. But then Osaka starts his next turn with Firebat only having a random two drop on the board. So that would be quite nice. But we also see the first Nova on hand. So he might want to save the Doomsayer for Snowball for his turn 5. Exactly, that's uh, what we might see here. Oskaka is taking his time, he's facing that Mad Mage. Who is your favorite in that mage? If uh, in that match? If you have the Mag Mage going up against the Freeze Mage, who would you give the edge here? Usually it's like a huge edge for Freeze Mage, but I know that Firebat tagged in a wreck into his Mag Mage. So that helps in the matchup, but I would still give a small edge overall to the Freeze Mage. 
Okay, now Firebat on his turn. He can definitely swing to the face with his uh, spider tank. We have seen an ice block coming down here, so no ice barrier available for Askaka here. Uh, we could see a pile of the Dreader being played already. Uh, that's a nice turn for play. You do not have so much immediate value out of Mech Warper. You can play the Neutron in combination with that. But I totally agree to the to the pile of the Dreader here. Yeah, it's just more pressure. It's 4 damage, not just 3 damage, and it's better against Doomsayer because it gives you a 2-drop after the Doomsayer triggers, so... On the other hand, Oskaka now could go for uh, Bloodmaid Thanos to draw another card and take out the Spider Tank to prevent some damage. Um, that seems like a nice play to me because you're just one turn away from using Frost Nova into, into your Doomsayer. Yeah, Psych Tank Frost. Like, you play the Thanos mainly for control matchups. Against Echo you don't mind just cycling it, so we'll probably see that play. There we go, Fire Blast taking out the Spider Tank here. The Blood Mage Thanos coming down. And then it's Firebird's turn once more. That Clockwork Gnome is actually pretty nice. You can slam everything now, but be, be careful because turn 5 is coming. Yes, this is not a good hand for Firebird. So he can't trade his minions, but he has mad to ping anyway. Even if he drops his whole hand, it's only 3 mana with a Mech Warper. So he could do that and ping, but he probably doesn't want to overcommit into the Doomsayer. So he's trying to save his Mech Warper. Yeah, as it looks, he keeps the Mech Warper, pings the Blood Mage Thanos here, and will just end his turn. And turn 5, Oscar Kerr. The question is, you could also go for the card draw if you feel greedy here. Yeah, but you're in a fine position. It's only 7 damage. Staring at you, you can ping even after the first bolt, so it's only uh, even after the uh, Akin Intellect, so it's only 5 damage, so you don't mind taking 5 damage here. So I'm pretty sure you'll see the Intellect and the ping on the 2 1. Exactly, yeah. That's also what Oscar guy goes for, and let's see what he draws. He draws another Arcane Intellect and a Mad Scientist here. That Mad Scientist is going to hit the board this turn. He's not gonna ping over that. I don't think. Yeah, I also agree to that. Setting up another secret here, so Oskaka might just go for the 2-2 for the Mad Scientist here. Um, there we go! As Xixo predicted, Mad Scientist comes on the board, and Firebat n might now be thinking, okay, mm, we have seen the Arcane Intellect coming down, so maybe he does not even have his Frost Nova Doomsayer, so I'm gonna go all out. And even if he plays that Doom, if Oskaka plays the Doomsayer, you can still handle it with Fireball into Fire Blast if you want to. Yeah, but it's going to turn six now, so he could also expect a Blizzard into a Flame Strike, but he knows he didn't put up enough pressure yet. The Mage is still at 16 HP, about to get a Ice Barrier of his Mad Scientist, and already has an Ice Block out, so he. Knows he can't play around Blizzard in the flame strike. He has to go for the more aggressive play. Exactly, he has to put on the pressure now because that's his, his win condition. And he's also thinking about the armor plating because, as you already s said, uh, we are facing a probable Blizzard here. Yeah. But as we know, it's not in the hand of Askaka. So I think that's enough pressure here to feel like I go for. Frost Nova into Doomsayer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's going to be the play. If he fireballs it, you can't do much about it. You can fireball ping it at any point. You can't play around that. So I think he will play that, and I think he will also trade off the Divine Shield of the Neuert one with his Mad Scientist. We're just waiting for Askaka to gather his thoughts to find out what's the optimal play here, and also to think about the next turn is coming up here because he's definitely he's already down to 16 HP even though he has his secret and probably the next secret already up with the mad scientist he is down to quite some health already yeah like he's really suffering since he doesn't have an AoE on hand this would be an easy win if he had either a flame strike or a blizzard since he doesn't he will probably have to do the first nova play and try to throw him to a blizzard next turn there we go, he attacks into the Neutron, then plays the Frost Nova Doomsayer, and I'm pretty sure that Firebat now has to play his Fireball and then use his Hero ability because you can't just lose that board. 
that board is really everything that holds him in that game right now. Like, he could think that he's in a worse position than he is. He doesn't know that there's no clear in Oscar's hand. So if he like feels like in a bad worse position than he actually is, he might just go for the fireball first bolt phase, hoping to turn to fireball next turn so he can p uh, proc the ice block on turn 7 and kill him on turn 8 before the Alex Feather comes down. But that seems like a really greedy play to do. Yeah, that's feeling very lucky if you think you got 20 cards in your deck and the uh, chances of drawing the fireball here, they're pretty low. Sometimes you just gotta believe. <laughs> so that's the play you would do here? Would you go face? No, no, no. No, like, no, no. You didn't see Pizzard last so you just hope there's no flame strike as well. But the chance that there's no flame strike is more than 5%. And there we go, the Clockwork Gnome comes down. Oskaka draws another Ice Barrier. That's not really what you want to see here. No. You already have the Mad Scientist out. Just gotta hope that he runs too. I have seen um, Freeze Mage just only playing one Ice Barrier. That would be really bad, and then the Mad Scientist wouldn't get value. So I'm really hoping for Osaka that there's another Ice Barrier in this deck. But also it's going a bit awkward here for Osaka because as you mentioned, there's no removal for him. Yeah, he has to draw cards. He does it quite well, he draws his Mad Scientist in, uh, trades his Mad Scientist in first, because if he didn't do that, he could draw his Ice Barrier off the Ekin Intellect and just lose because his Mad Scientist wouldn't get value. So exactly, and finally he draws into the flame strike. Yeah, but he doesn't have the mana yet, so it's probably <laughs> going to be. In, he's probably just playing as Acolyte and playing Icelands to save 4 HP. Yeah, that's also the play I see here. And you have both secrets done, so he even decides to not prevent those 4 damage going to the face. He takes it and preserves his Icelands here. Firebat, on the other hand, he has... He has 19 damage, I think, but Osaka is on 24 HP. So, I don't think he's going to trade into the Acolyte. I think he'll just hit the face. Even though you cannot deal lethal damage, you would still not trade the Acolyte here? No, you can't waste 3 damage. Or like, he either has to give him 2 draws if he trades in, or waste 4 damage. He doesn't have an efficient way to trade into it, so he's just going to ignore it and hit the face. And for now, that's exactly what Firebat does. Very patiently, he chooses one minion after the other, swings to the face very carefully. Then also the Fire Blast coming down here. Just a Tinker Town Technician left. Where does he swing with that? Once more, he thinks about trading into the Acolyte of Pain or swinging to the face, but then he comes up and trades oh. into the echo lot of pain here. I didn't see that coming. Oscar card draws his Emperor Thorison, and he's got a very full hand here. But. But he's only at nine cards. Yeah, but it's still a very decent hand here for Emperor Thorison if it comes down. But I feel like you have to play the Flame Strike this yeah, turn. Yeah, the Flame Strike is just too good. So to definitely, damage. that's your play here. But still, Emperor Thorison hitting. You want him to hit the most cards possible. Yeah, considering Firebat is out of cards, basically, Thanos is a really good one. But it's not close to being the best. It would be better if you would have gotten either a four attack minion or um, the wording. The formatic because he needs pressure. The Sinos will give him a card, but it will take one or two turns before he draws that card. Oh, never mind, he thinks it himself. So, he gets a card draw now, but he doesn't get a good draw. Like, the mirror entity is a really bad one to get, so the Metsinos doesn't get good value because in Freeze Mate you always expect a second Doomsayer or maybe an explosive sheep, so you don't really want the mirror entity. Exactly, that's it. And Oscar Car draws into a second Ice Lens. Unfortunately, he does not have a Frost Bolt available to trigger that. But he does have another Ice Block, so he might just go for it, play the Alex Feather. Because he knows Firebat either has to play a Taunt or freeze the Alex Feather, since there's no other way for him to survive. And if he does that, it's unlikely that he still can block the Ice Block. So he probably has two turns to kill him. And he has over two turns 50 damage. He can just play a second Ice Block next turn. First bolt, first bolt, ping, and then after he can just pyro in the face. So he knows if there's no low slap coming down, he is going to win with that play. But 
he might consider playing around low side here. Exactly, but as you already pointed out, uh, he's hoping that there's no freeze or taunt in Firebat's hand, but as we know, two spare parts, the emergency coolant and the rusty horn. Yeah, but those aren't enough, since he ne also needs a low step to block the ice block, because otherwise, just from hand, there's a second ice block to survive another turn, and double ice lands ping for 5 damage, and then the turn after, Pyro for 10, for exactly so. Yeah, totally, so Firebat may be in his last moves here, using the Frostbolt once more. Maybe also... Well, you can keep that at this point. You could have played it with Thanos, though. And then you would have blocked the secret right now, so... But yeah, the thing is, Thanos last turn, otherwise he wouldn't have had the Mad Sign just now. Exactly. Still have damage that way. Exactly. Yeah. So, now, you do have another Fireball in your hand. He goes for the Pyroblast immediately. Yeah, since he's at my HP, the Ice Block didn't get blocked, so he can do that now. That's why he also wins against Low Slap, because he can just replay Ice Block and win the turn after. So the only way to win for here, for Osaka, like, Osaka knows that the only way for him to lose would be if Firebat top decks the Low Slap, plays it, and his spare part has to be the time reminder to play it again the turn after. But that's not the case. He is going to lose at win this game. And there we see the last moves here of the game. Firebat did proc the secret. And Oskaka has way than enough damage way more than enough damage in his hand. And he goes for the fireball, and that's enough to kill Firebat off here. And that's mean that means the one zero victory here in the first game of the series for Oskaka. Yeah, like I know Firebat thought the matchup would be good for him since he plays a rack in his list, but he didn't draw it and he didn't de draw his other high impact cards, Lothab and Dr. Boom either, so very unfortunate draw. Yeah, and for Oscar Kyle left is the Rogue and the Druid. He's going up against Firebat on Hunter, Mage and Paladin. So what would you expect Oscar Kyle to pick here? Um. He is really confident on Hunter, so he might just try to get his Hunter win off now. Well, let's see if you're right with wait. your prediction and Oh wait, Hunter got banned. I'm oh yeah, Hunter got banned. Bad. Yeah, just Rogue and Druid left. Uh, I was also expecting him to play the Rogue because it's doing pretty well against Paladin. It's also decent against Hunter and, and Mage. And there we go, he picks his Rogue to f start the second game with that. That's a good hand from both sides, but a good hand from both sides usually favors the Rogue. But, uh, like, a macro I can easily go out of control. Firebat, on the other hand, he has he has a nice start here with the Mag Warper and the Clockwork Gnome. Also the Freeze, the Snow Chugger, very important in that matchup here. Unfortunately, not the coin on his side. That's a very crucial card. If you have, if you are the Rogue and you have the coin, that's always nice. Yeah, like having a way to enable the Mad Sign as a mm. SI agent that he just top decked as well is a really powerful play. But he also has a prep fan to always enable his SI if he wants to. Yeah, exactly. And we are just waiting now for, for Oscar Kha to maybe find out what the game plan is for him here. Because in that early turn one, you, you do have some options, but it's rather easy to find out what to play now. And I think he's right now thinking about what gameplay to use. <laughs> so, Oscar Ka now roping and finally goes for the coin into the Dagger Mastery. So, equips a 1 2 dagger for himself and will trade into the Clockwork Gnome here. Yeah, he sacrifices an easy way to enable the SI agent, but he just clears the board, gets rid of a card just for using the coin, sticking so his dagger up. So. 
Well, like that, we see the snow chugger coming down, and there's no answer to that, so that's definitely gonna hurt him. But as you already said, we do have the preparation into Fan of Knives on turn three if you want to, and then followed up by the SI7 agent, you can clear that snow chugger. Yeah, if you feel really threatened, you could even play the Silenos prep fan and attack into the snow chugger this turn, but there's just no way we see that play. First of all, he goes for the Blood Mage Thalnos uh, that might not even get taken out, so we might see a two damage uh, fan of knives here because you want to set the freeze on the face here. And you want also to develop a bigger board by playing probably the Spider Tank. So, using your hero ability here as Firebat does not really look right. No, that's not an option. You can't just use. Like you don't have a one drop, so you can't use your whole turn just to ping a Thalnos. He also doesn't want to kill it because he wants to freeze the face. So the silence is probably going to stay on the board. There we go, Firebat places a mirror entity here on the board and we are probably about to see... Well, you could still just go for the SI7 agent, but now with the secret coming down, it's it's not good because you don't deal with the snow chugger, so I really feel like you have to do Preparation into Fan of Knives and then uh, the SI7 agent to do something. You can also just play Fan and trade and save your prep because then you can prep Fan and SI next turn. Yeah, that's that's also an option. I also like that way of playing it out. But he decides to do it with the the Actually, SI7 agent and yeah, very nice to trigger it first. Thing. Now the Fan of Knives coming down and then you can also take care of that other SI7 agent taking it out with your Blood Mage Thalnos. That's a really good play by Osaka and Firebird is going to have a hard time recovering from that. He doesn't have a good way to challenge the SI agent. Like, what to do? he doesn't want to play the Spider Tank only, so it's probably going to be either Shredder or Mad Scientist Neckwarper into ping Spider Tank next turn. But the plays he has don't really feel good. Exactly, that's it. Uh, out of this position, it all feels a bit awkward here. But he goes for Mad Scientist into Mac Warper and will then end his turn because he is out of mana. Oskaka finally draws into a very nice deadly poison here, so he could just dagger up once more, use the deadly poison, take out one of the two, uh, one of the two drops, and then attack the other one. Yeah, that seems like a good play. And just getting the. SI agent trade into a mech warper and like that's just a trade you never want to give to a rogue. It's feels so painful for Firebat. He couldn't deny that trade. Since Mage can never afford to use a superpower in this matchup, he has to play the tempo play, he has to use his mana for minions. So the three I SI agent is gonna still gonna do a lot of work. There we go, Dagger Mastery comes down and now we see the deadly poison here and what is he gonna swing to? You he trades the Mac Warper with that and we'll just go to the face with his SI7 agent here. That attack to the face will be punished by the rolling blade. Yeah, you can use your rolling blades here with the pile of the dreader if you want to. And that SI7 agent will die to exactly that. And by getting another mirror entity that I expect to see here. Uh, it makes an awkward turn 5 for Oskaka. You do have the Azure Drag, you do have the Lower Thub. Also drawing into a pile of that Shredder. Mm. But what do you do? Yeah, that's the question. What do you do? You really don't want to give your opponent one of those big minions here. So that's exactly the point here for Oskaka to think about. He has a second preparation in his hand. I feel like... Uh, it's, it's very awkward. I guess I would give my opponent the Azur Drake because you can't just do nothing this turn. Yeah, you definitely can't just pass. You have to proc the Mirror Entity. Um, you could consider playing the Loath Heaven's Dead if you're for some reason scared of the spell damage, but I agree the Drake seems like the obvious play. If you Drake, you could also attack into the one of the minions and kill it off with Pep and Fan, but you probably want to save Pep Fan for next turn. Yeah, and he, there he goes, he plays the Azur Drake, then draws into a Zap here. Unfortunately, Firebat also gets an Azur Drake. It would have been nice here to maybe draw into a Blade Flurry. You could have used that with the preparation if you wanted to. I expect to see a prep Zap here on the Shredder. 
just to deny the trade into the twig. And that's what we are going to see. Exactly, so a nice prediction here. And Shredder comes back to the hand. You could even think about keeping your own Azure Drake now as Firebat, using your Fireball for the trade, then use your Mad Scientist for more board presence. If you do not want to trade it into your opponent's Azure Drake. You could also just ignore it and play really greedy and just take it into the face because your Shredder does threaten the trade into the Drake. So if he doesn't have space to deny that trade, he will the trade himself. But if there's a Blade Flurry, he will get punished a lot. So he probably is going to either trade or play his Fireball, but I expect a trade in Shredder Scientist. We should note that both med uh, mirror entities are used already, so the med scientist will not actually pull a secret. Yeah, I totally agree to that. Uh, but it feels it feels so greedy to me if Firebat just goes for that here. Yeah, but like if there's a play flurry, he loses the spot anyway, and it's in a really bad position anyway. So I wouldn't mind if he goes and plays like there's no. Um, no, play Flurry because that's his way to win. But he doesn't, he feels scared. Yeah, in the end, he goes for the Fireball and takes out the Azure Drake here. And now Oscarka's turn is up once more. Oscarka also knows that there's no secret left, so he might just backstab the. Mad Scientist to get rid of the body. But he has the option between playing Shredder and Low Zap. He can't really use his mana, like the other one or two mana. But Shredder threatens to trade more efficient uh, the Drake, so it might be the better play. Yeah. We will see what Oscar Car comes up with here. I really like his style. I really like his play style. He is very patient. He, every turn we see, he takes his time. And that's really one thing about offline events. Taking your time, staying patient. Well, you know that. You also have a great run here at Seed Story Cup. Yeah, I've been getting quite lucky so far. So how important is it actually to really take the time and to really every turn Evaluate the situation that you're in because it changes every turn by things that happen and by drawing other cards. It's always important to take your time and consider all options. But in the land, it's even more important because you know, if you're in a usual setting, you are for sure nervous. Like, there's no player who isn't nervous at his first lance. So, taking your time saves you from making stupid misplays because you miss easy stuff due to your nervousness. So, taking your time is really important. Yeah, uh, before the series started, you were talking that uh, Oskaka is one of the best... Uh, well, you were saying he's the best player in the world right now. Uh, to be honest, uh, that uh, confused me a bit because I didn't expect, expect you to say that. Uh, but how can he... He's going up against Firebat, so a reigning world champion. Yeah, Oskaka is also... I mean, Firebat is also pretty good at the game. Yeah. So I think it's probably like the highest level match we've seen so far in this tournament, judging by the players. Okay, wow. Like, because what? also Life Coach is uh, rank one on the Gozo, uh, Gozo Gamers ranking, and many people uh, say that Life Coach is the best player in the world right now, so that's uh, more the overall mindset, I would say. So, And the crazy series between Life Coach and Maverick, uh, but you still value this, this match between those two players higher here? Yeah, I mean, the lineups, like, just after uh, Oscar. Kerr. Get a win with his freeze mate, lineups favor him a lot, so this matchup might end in a 3 0, but just judging by the players, I think it might it's probably the mm. highest level of play we'll see this tournament. Okay, well, uh, I guess if you say that, there might be a point to that. Uh, Oscar Kaka, to me, well, he did not have so many uh, appearances at offline events, he's uh, well known in the online scene, but. Once more, I am really surprised to hear you say that, but uh, you got your reasons for that. And so far, we can totally see that because he's playing very well and he's really, yeah, he's really putting Firebat into a struggling position here. Yeah, the game is still close. Like, Firebat could get 
Also, I got 10 HP with a first bolt on hand, so a top deck fireball would end the game. But there's only one fireball left, so he might want to trade to not get ran, ran over by one plate flurry. But there's still no plate flurry in Osaka's hand. He is like through half a stack already and didn't get one of the two best cards that made chess. He so takes out the lower top eventually with his, uh, with his frost bolt. So at least we saw that coming down. But Firebat now pushing a lot of pressure, uh, putting a lot of pressure here on the board. And drawing into... The thing is, you don't really want to trade anymore with your weapon. No, but he has two line of plays. One would be just Fan of Knives to see what he gets. The other play would be just Dagger Up, Deadly Poison, Tinker Soil and hit him in the face. That would be... <laughs> Some kind of all 40 volume. damage this turn. So it would force his opponent to trade something. So I wouldn't mind that play since he sees Firebat is out of cards. Oh, Oscar goes for the Fan of Knives, but we have seen both preparations coming down this turn and drawing into that sprint. He, that's something he can't use this turn. What does he get out of the Shredder? That's easily the worst one he could get. Ooh, yeah, I totally agree to that. Low Walker show, ladies and gentlemen. Baby Rage, never lucky. <laughs> Baby Rage, never lucky here. And Oscar then goes for the Dagger Mastery and takes out the Mad Scientist. But already, as you pointed out, no secrets left anymore in Firebat's Mech Mage deck here. And yeah, that's representing lethal damage on the board. But wow! What a top deck here. The Blade Flurry desperately needed. Yeah, he is going to Redagger, Deadly Poison, Tinker's Oil, Attack Phase and Blade Flurry. And then the Chalk and Elsa attack. He gives a couple of useless cards to the Mage because all of those cards... Like the only card Mage could use would be a combo Tinker's Oil to buff one of his minions. But since there's no charge minion, Ostraker would just be able to trade into the buffed up minion the turn after. So. That's you know, I really like that Low Walk Cho gets buffed up here because seeing a Low Walk Cho dealing damage to Firebat's face, it just looks so funny to me. There we go, Blade Flurry, Deadly Poison. You know, I would love to see now a... a Blinktron. Blinktron would be so cool with Deadly Poison, Tinker Sharp Sword Isle. That would just be crazy Hearthstone action. Yeah, like, no matter what weapon he would get, it would be lethal with Deadly Poison and Blade Flurry. Yeah. A good thing now here is that you can... You can use the Tinker's Oil, but you need to combo it. Yeah. Actually, you can play it without, and it doesn't do anything. Like, you can play Tinker's Oil without weapon or minions, I think, but the reason to do that would just be to cycle it with the Archmage and deny us into a Fireball. So, that would be a cool thing to see. Totally, that's it. And Oskaka is down to 4 HP. What a tense match here. But he top decks a Sap, that's definitely going down. He just considers daggering up, setting up lethal for next turn with Sprint, or using a Sprint this turn. But I'm pretty sure we will see Sprint into Sap this turn already. Sprint into Sap. Oh no, yeah. wait, wait, wait. Then he gives a Sprint to his opponent. Yeah, that's the thing. That's so the thing I'm, s I'm thinking about. He could have tried right his Cho in first, just to not give the Sprint to his opponent. But anyway, he does not really care because. What does Fireband want to draw? Yeah, since if Sprint is 7 mana, he couldn't use Frostbolt, Ping or Fireball afterwards. So exactly. But look at that, drawing two Violet Teachers and a Blade Flurry here w in combination with that Edwin Van Cleef does not really help Oskaka here in that situation. No, like, this game looks really bad for him now. We will see the Sprint come down for Fireband. Probably so a step first on the show. Yeah, I expect to see a sap into sprint here. Well, oh. I also like to see the Archmage and the Nidus. But then you can't deal with the Joe, so... Oh, he's gonna zap it? And yeah, oh, yeah, because sure. he gets a fireball. Yeah. You zap it, you get a fireball, yeah, your opponent gets bad. another zap. I, I really like that. Yeah, you get the fireball, that's why it's... Uh, you take all the threads off the board and it all comes down to this. And Oskaka, how do you want to deal 9 damage in this turn? Even if he gets Tinker's Sword, it would be 1 damage off, so I don't see it. Oh. oh, he gets the Tinker's Sharp Sword Oil! 1 damage off this. Oh. Oh. Baby Rage, never lucky. Oskaka has to give up 1 damage off lethal here. A bit unlucky, we might say. And Firebat wins here with his Mech Mage. So the, uh, the series is equalized again. We had the equalizer here. 1-1 one, one now between Oskaka and Firebat. And now the matchups we are going to see are like really important. Actually, 
it's going to be really hard for Firebat to get a win against the Rogue. Like, Rogue is really good against both Midrange Hunter and um, the Paladin. But both of those decks are favored against Druid. So, Osaka has one really good match, like one really good deck, one really bad deck. So, yeah, exactly. That's it. You want the Hunter to go up against the Druid here. But with his mid-range hunter as it is, he runs into the rogue by Oscar K. And Oscar K gets another chance to grab a win here with his rogue. This matchup is probably around 60% for the rogue player. So Oscar can't feel bad about the matchup, but he still needs a win. This is true afterwards, even if he wins. And if he loses this matchup, he's going to be in a really tough position because then he would have to beat Paladin with Stuart. You are definitely right. Because it's a best of five series, it's in conquest mode. He has to win with his Druid as well. First of all, let's see how this game plays out. Because you said, in your opinion, it's a 60 40 here for the Rogue. But that still leaves a 40% chance to the Sneaky Hunter to grab a win here. And we do have double, double Eagle Horn Bow in Firebat's hand. That's not really what you want to see, but at least the Eagle Horn Bow is pretty nice to take care of those Earthen Ring Farseers. We haven't seen them yet, because maybe Oscar K does not even play them. But you can also deal with the SI7 agents and also attack into the pile of the Traders. Yeah, Eagle Horn Bow is a good card in the matchup, but you still obviously don't want to. But Oscar K is not does not have an answer for the knife juggler. That's not what you want. You don't want to leave that up. So he's going to consider just sapping it. Uh, let's see. He doesn't go for it. Yeah, that's a bit unfortunate that Oscar Card draws two zaps in the early game. Yeah. That's well, they are crucial in that match because you want to zap a Savannah high main here, but Wow, and even the lucky juggler. juggle! So oh. Firebat, Baby Rage, Apple Lucky. <laughs> If only that Knife Juggler wouldn't have hit, then the Fan of Knives would be crucial. Like, they would just grab Fan and play Fan Cleave to get a 6 6 and kill the Knife Juggler. That was a really lucky hit. Very important here. Considering Very important. no silence in Firebat's hand, I would say the game would be almost over if the Thanos didn't get sniped. Like this now, this is a very awkward turn once again here for Oscar Kaa. I am pretty sure we are going to see Prep Zap Van Cleef. Prep Zap Van Cleef. Yeah, you get a 6 6 Van Cleef out. Hope there's no Iron Beak Owl following that up. Next turn you have Shredder, Prep, and Fan. So it just seems like the only play that makes sense. Here. No, no, you don't have because you use Prep right here. So oh, you he only don't has have. one Prep for some reason. I thought he has two Preps on hand. My bad. Yeah. But maybe he draws a 2 1. We never know. Maybe Oscar Card yeah, draws a 2 1. So. But now he's roping once more. Let's see what comes down here. It's preparation into Zap. And just as Xixo predicted, I also think... Wow, he does not Zap the Knife Juggler. He Zaps the Haunted Creeper. And there we go, Edwin Van Cleef. The thing as a hunter here... You don't want the 6-6 six, six to be around, but you also don't really want to trade your knife juggler no, into you that and... You want to play a freezing trap here, but he doesn't have it, so he is going to do the trade. And he can't feel good about that, but... Oh well, that's what you gotta do. Otherwise you just play from behind if Osaka has a way to deal with the minion with a spell next turn and can just connect to the face with his fan cleave. Oskaka is the first again to put a minion on the board. We could see Firebat take out that Shredder and see what comes out. Maybe then play his own Shredder. It's most likely going to be the play. The only question is if you play the Shredder first or if you play it after the trading because there could be the mana of us. But he goes for the trade first. Yeah, if a Doomsayer comes out, you do not want to play your Shredder here. I think you would still go for it just to get the two drop. It's not too bad. Mm, yeah, probably play Haunted Creeper Hero Power then, but it wouldn't be that bad to play Shredder. It would be worse if he would just get uh, just get his minion blocked for Manavas. 
Yeah, it depends. Anyway, he went for the trade into the Shredder, and what came out is an unstable ghoul. He will go for the second zap here. So now both zaps are gone. And that's uh, very nice to know for Firebat once those Sludge Belchers and uh, the Savannah High Mains come down. Yeah, but there was no real option for Ostraka. He couldn't just use this whole turn to deal with the Shredder and not get anything going for himself. The thing going in Oskaka's favor here, though, is that uh, Firebat is dropping down to 17 HP already. Yeah, we are going to see a fan and a Eviscerate this turn, most likely, since there doesn't seem to be another good play. He can play an uncomboed Tinker's Oil, but a 4 damage oil doesn't trade into a, the Sludge Belcher, so yeah. Wow, and there's a second Eviscerate here, so a lot of damage available for Oskaka. Though, on his next turn, he is going to have a really awkward time if he doesn't top deck a way to enable his Tinker's Oil, because right now he's on 7 mana, he has a hero power for 2, he has 5 mana left, and both of his cards, cards have to get enabled. So, he kind of relies on drawing a card that does that next turn, or a minion that he can drop down. You could also draw into a sprint to refill your hand. Yeah, but there's an option that, like, there's a potential for Firebat to just play uh, high main this turn. And if he high mains, he's gonna just uh, sprint and pass. But there's no high main in Firebat's hand, so that's good for Oskaka. Firebat is thinking about the pilot is ready here. It comes on the board. Followed up by a Haunted Creeper. There we go, he passes his turn, and there are the Earthring Farseers. Well, one of them at least. So, the play he could go for would be to trade his SI Agent into the, um, into the Haunted Creeper, heal it back up to 3 HP with his Farseer, then Hero Power into the Shredder and trade his Ghoul into the Shredder to kill off everything but the 2-drop that gets summoned. So, yeah, that's one option. If that's a big threat to you, you could then still use your Ivis Raid. Yeah. So, that's that's a nice trade here. Though, he might consider to just play Ivis Raid on the Shredder itself and then see what comes out. So, he can still play Trader School into the minion that gets dropped out. Like, he knew there was no silence in his opponent's hand before. Oh. Oskaka goes for the Tinker's Sharpsword Oil just to get a 4-2 weapon here. And yeah, like that, he's preparing to deal lethal damage to his opponent. And without a taunt, and especially without a heal that's not available in the mid-range Hunter, uh, we are facing lethal damage next turn. Yeah, that was actually a really good play by Oskaka. I didn't see that he can get him in lethal range by just playing this way next turn. So, there's no answer for a Oskaka is going to take it with a really nice gamble. Yeah, first of all, the board gets cleared. Firebat will set a Haunted Creeper, as it looks. Maybe then play his Eagle Horn Bow, swing to the face once more. He has double kill command, so 10 damage potentially coming in next turn. That's a lot of burst, but as we know, it is all coming too late, because Ostkaka has lethal damage on board and hand. But what do you do? You have to play the fast here to enable the Eviscerate. Yeah. So, do you heal the Shredder? You heal yourself. Why wouldn't you heal the Shredder? <laughs> because I'm not a BM player. <laughs> but Sixo would have liked to see the BM here. We also could see the BM with the Blade Flurry, but Oskaka very well mannered. And uh, like that, being very polite, he takes the series here. Oh no, he doesn't yeah. take the series. He takes the third game. It's 2-1 uh, now here over Firebat. For Oskaka left still is the Druid going up against the Midrange Hunter and the Paladin. So, two unfavored matchups, but both are definitely winnable there. Yeah? Probably around 35 to 40% for Druid, I would say. So, it's still a close match, even though it's 2 1 in Oscar's favor, just because of the decks that are left. Yeah, and Firebat picks his Paladin first, going up against the Druid. Quickly have to rejoin the players queued so fast. Uh, we want to see both players' hands here. Firebat in the front of this. There we go.
Princess Malfuria. I must protect the one. I will fight with Firebat has a hand here with equality big game hunter Harrison Jones and that is looking very bad. I mean, if you compare Firebats to Oscar's hand, that doesn't seem fair. Oh my god, yeah, Oscar, Wild Grove, Innervate, Dr. Boom already here, and Firebat just got nothing to play. Even the lay on hands, wow. He really needs to jump like a master for battle next turn, otherwise, he's going to be in a really bad position. Exactly, exactly, that's it. And now, as being Oscar, you can play your Wild Grove this turn. You can play Dr. Boom next turn. <laughs> play Dr. Boom next turn if you want to. Wow, that just seems unfair. But if he goes for that play, we will then see the big game hunter coming down. So you could also play it a bit slower. You could go for the pilot of Dreader first and then follow it up. But wow, did you call that? Did you actually call that, Six? So it's happening. It's happening, the Master for Battle. But now I call uh, the swipe top deck by Oskaka. Come on, give me the swipe. Give me the swipe. I want to see the swipe here. Would he even play swipe this turn? I think you would wait for next turn to use your swipe. I don't think you want to swipe this turn. Mm, yeah, sure. But still, it would be nice to see it in the hand here. Yeah, you wouldn't be mind seeing it. We might just see a sludge pager here. It seems like, from our perspective, the best play he could do, but he doesn't know about the BGH. He might just go for the Dr. Boom. Yep, that's what we're going to see. He is not going to be happy with that play. In a right into coin, into Dr. Boom on turn four. That's probably his only BGH target, so it's not like he needs to get BGH, BGH out of the way. So he is not going to be happy to see the big game under this turn coming down. Firebat should attack face with at least two of the 1-1s one first. It's a small misplay because you need one left to trade. And you can attack face with two anyway because if you have two left that can attack, even if Boomward snipes one, you still get one left. So he missed one damage there. Exactly, and like that, another silver hand recruit gets taken out. So just one silver hand recruit left here, but the game, big game hunter comes on the board and takes out that Dr. Boo. I expect to see the keeper here to deal with the big game hunter, but he might want to save it for Tyrion and just play a sludge instead, sludge pager. But I would expect the keeper to just go for the tempo play. Yeah, me too. I really like that here. I really like seeing the keeper. But Oskaka goes for the sludge voucher. It comes down on the board. And wow, another master for battle. So do you just risk it and believe there's no swipe? Firebat does. Firebat <laughs> believes. Firebat is a believer. Maybe he did pray to Aaron Jesus a lot. Who doesn't? <laughs> do you play? Uh, do you pray to Aaron Jesus every day? All day, every day. All day, every day. That's nice to know. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to be a good player, pray to Aaron Jesus. You will get rewarded. And let's see if Firebat gets rewarded himself. Masterful battle comes down. Three juggles. You want to clear that slime. And. Easily cleared here, the third juggle to the face, it didn't even matter anymore, and then another swing, the silver hand recruit also goes to the face. That's Levanas that's going to hit the board this turn. It's the only somewhat reasonable answer to a quartermaster. It's still not going to do much, but all his other plays are worth, so I expect the Sylvanas coming down. I think so too, it fits the curve, it His only deals. option would be a keeper into hero power, to deal with the night juggler and one of the tokens. But then he's in a really bad position if the Quartermaster comes down. Well, you could also think about second Belcher, even though I don't like that, but that's another option. No and Oscar Car goes for Sylvanas. No Quartermaster top deck. That's unfortunate for Firebat. But he has a BGH, he can't complain about his draw this game. So what we might going to see is an equality and attack to the face with a knife juggler and then hero power to see if the knife juggler snipes it and then you can use your um, Lights Justice to trade into whatever Sylvanas takes. But he is going to save the equality and he yeah. trades. Yeah, as it looks he saves the equality. That's also a very crucial call here in this matchup. So it seems like he's going to trade. That means He's going to be left with three tokens. One gets stolen, one gets 
concentrate in. So there's three left. Wait, wait, no, no, no. What? Why would he take five damage there? That doesn't make sense to me. Why wouldn't he trade a 1-1 one, one and then use his face to attack into the one he still... Yeah, like, he just took four more damage for no reason at all. He would have just traded one of his dudes into Sylvanas and then used his weapon to kill the one he um, Osaka steals with Sylvanas. So there was no reason to take five damage instead of one. I totally agree to that and... Yeah, now it's another turn here for Oscar Kerr. Well, unfortunately, you don't have 8 mana available here. You could go for, for 2 minions, but what you can do is... I would go for Azure Drake, draw another card, have another option in your hand available, and then go for the Shapeshift, trade one of those Silver Hand recruits away. You also see no play in Firebird Sand, so he relies on the top deck. If he just has to pass this turn, he's going to be in a really unfortunate position. But he gets a Shredder, that's a good one. Do you use Equality this turn? That's the question. He didn't use it last turn, so... Mm, now he feels like using it, okay. He will then go for the Harrison Jones. No, to he's going for the Shredder. Yeah, okay. He just thought about it, touched the card. But in the end... The Shredder also feels better to me here. Yeah. Like, if he plays Harrison... He's just gonna get his whole board cleared by one swipe. That doesn't seem like something he wants to go for. Firebat also dropping down to 17 HP, but we do see the Lion Hands in hand and the Tyrion Ford ring, so he has got something to prevent himself from dying to a combo. So, the most reasonable play seems to be Double Shredder to me. So, I expect that to come down. But then we will see the Tyrion, and the Tyrion will be hard to get answered. Like, Tyrion will have to get silenced, but then he can't remove it, most likely, if Firebat goes for some trades. Yeah, it would still be a 6-6 body, and that's very awkward to deal with. I don't know why he goes for the hero power and sludge over Double Shredder. Double Shredder seems, to me, like it would be the better play, just because you expect Leon Hands or Tyrion on turn 8. You don't expect him to deal with your board on turn 8. So Double Shredder, to me, just seems more powerful. Put your faith in the light. Anyway, now we see Firebat playing that uh, Tyrion Fort Ring here. We do have the Silence available, but, though, but as we already pointed out, uh, that 6-6 six, six buddy, it's just very annoying on the board. So the Silence will anyway have to come down. There's like no way. So the only question is if he plays a Shredder or a Drake, but he goes for the Drake. And finally he draws into a swipe. That's a nice card for next turn, but this turn you have to play the, your Keeper. There he goes, Oskaka picks the Keeper. It's still floating over the board, and there it comes down for the Silence on Tyrion Fordring. And he gets the opponent to combo range, so... Exactly. He could also win by playing uh, his, his swipe in combination with the Force of Nature if maybe the Azor Drake survives this this board. But I don't see that happening here. So maybe that was a reason he played Sludge over Double Shredder. Because if he played Double Shredder, he would get hit in the face for 5. And then he couldn't do this play to get his opponent to combo range after Tyrion. Because he wouldn't have the taunt out and would be just scared of dying. So I guess Osaka just played really well by playing the Sludge over the Shredder just because he needed the taunt play more aggressive himself. Yeah, but now we see the Leon Hands coming down, so he will eventually heal up for 21 H, uh, to 21 HP and probably then trade his Shredder into the opponent's Azor Drake. He draws an Emperor Thorson, Iron Big Owl and the Ragnaros. Oh, he even thinks about going into... Hmm, I expect to kill the Drake, but... I mean, if he thinks he can go for the value trade, that's... Inter an interesting option, like... I don't think we can do that because then he could just get comboed, get taken down to 1 HP, and you would die to like a hero power the turn after you don't have taunt on, ha taunt on hand, so... Yeah, he goes for the... Um, safer trade and kills the Drake. If you were Oskaka now, what would you do this turn here? Emperor, swipe on Therion and hit face for 2. Yeah. 
That seems like a very slick play here. And Oscar Kai exactly goes for it. Hits face and reducing all the costs. It's so nice to see a Shredder for three mana, a Keep Off the Grow for three mana. It just feels so good. Firebat, on the other hand, what are his, are his options to take something off the board? He you can play the Ragnaros, but even if Rag snipes the 5-5, five five, Combo would kill him because Combo now is only 7 to 8 mana. So he can also get the hero power out the same turn. So. Yeah, uh, if Firebat wants to play around the combo here, he has to remove everything off the board and stay healthy enough. It's only way for to be to play Knife well, Juggler. You, you can also play your Eldor. No, because you pointed it out, you can use your hero ability with that combo, with that reduced combo, so that Eldor Peacekeeper would not be enough. I'm kind of surprised to not see the Knife Juggler coming down first. I guess he will go for the Emperor himself then. But that's like a really greedy play. And there we go, Emperor Thorson comes down. And three damage available on Askarka's board right now. Does he draw into the Savage Roar? That's the big question here, ladies and gentlemen. Does he draw it? It's a Ragnaros. So how the damage is that? That's not close to being enough. If he had a Savage Roar, instead of the Force of Nature, he might just go for the attack on the face. But Force of Nature seems pretty useless here. Yeah, I also don't see that play here. You can trade one of the minions away by your opponent. You could take out the Elder Peacekeeper if you wanted to, and then play Ragnaros, or just saturate the board a bit more with two piloted shredders, and maybe also clear the Gilblin Stalker here. He already saw BGH and he saw inequality, so he's not going to be scared of overcommitting, I don't think. So. He's just looking for the most powerful play. He doesn't want to play defensive or anything at this point anymore. He can silence his own Emperor. Then his cards wouldn't get cheaper anymore, but he would get to uh, attack for 5 damage. But I don't expect that. To yeah, but that's a nice thought here. Would also add another, another 4 damage. But he goes for it, hero ability, and then Ragnaros, the Fire Lord himself, coming down on the board. But what I like to see is a Consecration, a Ragnaros, an attack to the face, and one out of three times he just dies. One of three times Firebat wins the game. Okay, Firebat is in lethal range if we don't see a, a heal or a taunt coming He's going down. to play Consecration, attack face, and play back and go for the one and three lethal. There's no option to that play. That's it. That's it, so it all comes down to this Ragnaros hit. Do you feel the tension, Sixer? Like always, it's like... There's no justice in this world. Like, Osaka <laughs> played well, but he is going to lose this game because there just is no justice. There we go. It's a 33% chance. Oh, I was wrong. There's justice apparently. Ooh! So, Force of Nature and Keeper will deal 8 damage, even as magic hero power. Oh. He also can go for the silence on his own Ragnaros and then attack straight to the face! Closing that series out here, Oskaka doing a great job and wins 3 1 here over Firebat and proves that you were right saying that Oskaka might be the best player in the world. Yeah, but Firebat will win his next two matches and will make our scoop as well, so I'm not worried for him yet. Exactly, because we are still in the group stage that was just the first game of this group overall. It's group number D. And after a short break, we will be back with the next match of this group. And so that just leaves me with the word thank you, Xixo, for joining me as a co-caster. And you guys can also take a little break and see you after the break. <laughs>